great weather on the way as we head through the rest of your evening and even into the night for that matter. Mostly clear winds back off finally with overnight low temperatures falling mainly into the 30s to the east but 40s the closer to the Wyoming and Montana borders you go. Now set the stage for another nice day on Wednesday. Plenty of sunshine but warmer temperatures. Southerly flow helps kick that up a couple of notches. 70s to near 80 the latter more likely out west. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast coming up but until then first to four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. The James River is now flooding roads in parts of Kelloland. We're going to show you where the roads are closed. Plus, we have start dates for a few farmers markets across Kelloland. And later, Art Alley is becoming a popular tourist spot in Rapid City. Now organizers need some new ideas for murals. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. The slaughterhouse cleaning company that employed more than 100 children to help sanitize dangerous equipment has continued to lose contracts with major meat producers. Earlier this year, federal investigators confirmed that children as young as 13 were working for Packers Sanitation Services, Inc. at plants in several states, including Minnesota and Nebraska. PSSI says that it has taken a number of steps to tighten its hiring practices as part of an agreement with investigators. The Biden administration also urged the entire meat processing industry to take steps to make sure no kids are working in these plants either. The Labor Department says that there has been a 69% increase since 2018 in the number of children being employed illegally nationwide. It currently has more than 600 child labor investigations underway. Well, now that parts of the Mississippi River have finally crested in Minnesota and Iowa, the focus now shifts to cleanup. Flooding has plagued both states for weeks, damaging homes, businesses, and parks. The Dockside Bar and Grill in Dubuque, Iowa, temporarily closed last week as rising water overtook the only road in. The owner says, fortunately, the restaurant was not affected, but a nearby campground saw water levels come up to the bottom of campers. Just getting all the gravel and uh, all the fire piles and all the logs and whatnot that's washing into the park area, marina side. Uh, ramps, they come back down in place so they don't jam up and uh, start ripping the docks apart. And also the uh, spuds, a lot of them are out of, their, um, uh, out of the roofs and uh, the floor area. So everything has to come down and watch closely so nothing breaks. Feldman hopes to get things cleaned up and reopened this weekend. Well, parts of Kelloland are also dealing with some flooding. Our chief photographer, Kevin Kiergaard, spotted water over the roads north of Mitchell today. The flooding is coming from the James River. The emergency manager of Davison County is urging drivers to be careful and to stay away from the flooded areas. Well, the weather is starting to get much nicer out there. Except the wind. Well, the wind was a little cool this morning, wasn't it? We've got to have the wind. It wouldn't be South Dakota It wouldn't Dakota be South Dakota, that is for wind. sure, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, this is one of those cases where you have to take the good with the, I don't want to say bad, but less good, if you will. But uh, we do have that wind backing off as we head through the night. So we do finally get a break from that. We'll continue to stay dry as well, which will be uh, perfect for just continuing to at least try and get those riverbeds to try and recede a little bit. But we're not going to stay dry for much longer. Until we get to that point, though, outside we'll go as we kick off the hour in Rapid City. Beautiful blue skies above 66 degrees in Pennington County. Uh, southeasterly wind a little on the brisk side at 18 miles per hour. Keep in mind the direction of the wind that is going to play a huge factor in things 65 with a view of Falls Park beautiful afternoon to get out a north wind though at 24 miles per hour so a cooler wind over here in Sioux Falls a milder breeze out to the western rapid city the latter is what takes over as we head into Wednesday and even Thursday for that matter 60 Worthington to Marshall as well as in Watertown 65 Aberdeen and in Pier we'll throw in Philip for good measure 68 for Spearfish 69 degrees in Buffalo 50 
59 though as you go into Custer 65 winner and Mitchell 63 right now in Yankton. There's the breeze a little bit pronounced out to the west especially along the Wyoming border and then near and east of the James River where we have those gustier winds still in place for a little while longer but that does gradually back off like I said as we head into the night. Satellite and radar is working we just really don't have much of anything going on beyond a little bit of fair weather cloud cover now and again high pressure a firmly in control for the rest of the day for tomorrow but then the grip loosens a bit as we head into your day on Thursday specifically later in the evening we'll go into more detail on that in a moment but for your day tomorrow like I said beautiful weather to get outside 70s for high temperatures with light southwesterly breeze for both for southeastern and northeastern Kelowland is aiming into the mid 70s toward Huron and Miller but out west well, they overachieve a little bit 80s not out of the question in a couple of areas but like I said uh, we do have to keep an eye on the skies later in the week we'll talk about that and the rest of your seven-day forecast as we head through the hour okay thanks a lot Adam the Aberdeen School District is investing in its esports program as well as its agricultural education this is part of the Aberdeen Public Schools Foundation $15,000 district collaboration grant the esports team will receive new ergonomic chairs under the desk ellipticals and upright stationary bikes. Now for the ag courses, students will be able to grow plants with tower hydroponics. The growing towers will be used for leafy greens such as lettuce, kale, arugula, and herbs. This is on top of the new greenhouse that the high school students will start using this fall. With a 3,000-pound Newtonian telescope, the Badlands Observatory in Quinn, South Dakota, gives people the opportunity to get a glimpse into the universe. And because of the open spaces and smaller cities, South Dakota has darker skies compared to other parts of the country, which makes a great environment to view the stars. As South Dakotans, we sometimes take for granted dark skies because we grew up with them and they're so absolutely gorgeous. It's really not um, anything for us to think about looking up and seeing over 7,000 stars, but many of our visitors to Badlands Observatory don't see a lot of stars where they live. In tonight's Ion Kelloland at 10, we take a look at some of the telescopes at the Badlands Observatory. Midwest Honor Flight makes its return to Washington, D.C. this spring, and one of the hundreds of volunteers is preparing for her fifth mission. There's so many reasons, <laughs> but mostly it's for the veterans. It's a, just a enheartening type of thing. You know, it's, it's meaningful. Midwest Honor Flight has trips scheduled for May 14th and the 31st. We're going to tell you what Roxanne is looking forward to the most about her mission tonight on Cumberland News at 5.